A knife maker I look up to recently posted about coating their knives with carnauba wax for corrosion protection. I got to thinking I should test this and a few other coatings out. Today we'll be testing carnauba wax, renaissance wax, nanobond, a car sealant, and the silicone based LEM spray. I started out by putting two coatings at a time on a knife and leaving it outside for 24 hours, but it rained for 9 hours straight, then missed it all night, conditions that are hardly repeatable. So I've devised some other tests, you can decide how useful they are. We're going to run the coatings through a dishwasher, then put them under a faucet drip, and then do an abrasion resistance test and talk about how practical they are to apply. Speaking of, at the end of this video, I will tell you how I applied each of the coatings for this test. Universal to that process is applying a fresh A30 gator belt in between coatings, which basically sands the knife to about 600 grit. Then I wash the knife with soap and water, clean it with acetone, and then wipe it for residue before applying each coating. First up is carnauba wax, a hard wax from South America said to be food safe and durable. It melts at 185 degrees, but my low speed buffer will not load it. So I had to put my knife in the oven and bring it to 195 degrees to apply the stuff. What will that do to your handle material? You decide. Next is Renaissance Wax, apparently designed last century by the British Museum for Artifact Preservation. It is a microcrystalline wax that is smearable at room temperature but dries quickly once thinned out. It has a distinctly petroleum smell and is not food safe. Then there's Nanobond Ceramic Car Sealer. It is advertised as very long lasting and apparently has a pencil hardness of 9H, meaning it should resist scratches to some degree. Not food safe. Finally, there's LEM silicon lubricant spray used in food processing to resist corrosion. It is advertised as food safe and sprays on pretty easily. First up on the drip test is the carnauba wax. This is exactly what it sounds like. I just put this in my bathroom sink and drip water on it. I'll check on it every hour or so and we'll see where it goes. One hour, looking really strong. You see rust already started over here on the untreated area. Two hours. Four hours. So at four hours, I'm gonna check the backside. You'll notice the backside's been exposed to like standing water here, and then these edges are probably gonna cause some rust where the knife contacts the edge. So I'm just gonna flip it up and look. Whoa, I mean, there's some rust starting there in the standing water. It's been five hours and we're starting to get a few spots of rust. You see one right here and there's another one up in there. All right, that rust spot's a little bigger right there. And there's a few other dots coming up. In seven hours, we've got some spots over here that are growing, and now we've got some new spots over here. And the oxidation under the main uh, drip is also evident now. All right, at eight hours, I tapped it out, and we're taking a look at it now after wiping it off. There's a lot of little spots everywhere, and the backside looks pretty rough too. But overall, I think the carnauba wax did pretty well. Next up is the nanobond. So it's only been a few minutes, but look at the difference in the beading on the nanobond versus the carnauba wax. One hour, no change. Two hours. Hour three, still going strong. Just keep it ahead to five hours. There's nothing there. Seven hours, both sides. Got a little bit of stuff there. That's that's exactly what we saw on the other knife too, at seven hours, so. All right, it's eight hours. It's the tiniest little speck right there. Nine hours. Thirteen hours. So 17 hours I called it. Just a few spots.
spots there in that one. I call it at 17 hours because the spots are starting to spread on the front. Now the back is interesting, but I don't care about it. It's not the puddle of water test. It's the drip test. Here's the Renaissance wax. So at one hour, you can already see some rust spots forming here, here. We're at two hours now. The Renaissance wax portion is only doing marginally better than the bare portion. Renaissance wax. I couldn't really believe how poorly that did. So I went back, started over, and this time we did two coats of Renaissance wax. And that's what we'll do for all the testing from here on out. Renaissance wax, one hour. There's still some specs coming up. This is after two coats. Two hours. Renaissance wax, two hours and 45 minutes. I mean, this just really fell apart. I probably should have tapped this out around two hours. Next up, our LEM spray. I don't know what to expect. It's silicon, but it went on awfully easy. I suspect that means it comes off awfully easy too. We'll see. So it's got stuff all over. This is by far the worst result. I'm going to go ahead and tap it out at an hour. You know, based on the standards we applied to the other coatings, this one should be gone now. I'll probably run it one more hour just to see one what hour. happens. It's not looking good. <laughs> Two hours. Ouch. Next up is the dishwasher test because we all want to know what will happen if our carbon steel knives ever make it in there. I'm using a 2.5 hour standard wash cycle with drying at 176 degrees. First we're going to coat half our knife in renaissance wax then the other half in LEM and get it on. All right two and a half hours later I'm not expecting very much. I think the high heat cycle is going to wash away most of the stuff. Well you know what? The first side looks pretty good. Got a piece. But the second side didn't fare as well. Maybe those spots are where the detergent didn't get fully washed off. Right now it seems like a dead heat between the two. Let's run it one more time and see what happens. Yeah, more spots open up here. I'm wondering if both of these are now completely washed off. At any rate, I don't think I would trust either of them to protect my knife against an accidental wash cycle. You know, maybe that nothing really does that, by the way. We'll see. Next up, it's the Nanobond versus Carnauba Wax. You guys have probably figured this out by now, but I put both coatings on each side of the knife. So the Carnauba Wax will go at the tip on one side and on the base half or the heel half on the other side and vice versa for the Nanobond. Let's see what we get. Yeah, you know, that is not bad. That is not bad. The tip seems to be doing worse for all the finishing so far than the heel portion of the knife. But I think the Carnauba wax is holding up pretty well. It's not perfect. And the Nano Bond's doing a lot better than the first two finishes. Let's see what one more cycle will do. To me, it looks like both coatings survived the first wash and are still active during the second wash. There's only a few more additional spots here, mostly around the tip of the knife, which is what we saw in the past. I'm going to give the edge here to the Carnauba wax, though, which is hard to believe. I would have thought that the Carnauba wax would have washed off. These are probably creeping. How well did these knives stand up to a little bit of use? Let's find out. But first, let me explain something. So in this next test, we're going to cut some stuff, put it in a corrosive solution of three and a half cups of water, two tablespoons of hydrogen peroxide, and a half a tablespoon of salt. Now, what you're going to see is a bunch of streaking down the front of the knife like this one. And that's because the knives are at an angle, like a ski slope, and the corrosion forms like a little snowball right here. And then it sort of 
rolls downhill and causes a bit of an avalanche, corrosion starts more corrosion. It sort of multiplies. And so wherever there's corrosion, it's going to do extra damage. Now on the back of the knife, that's what I'm more interested in. And we'll sort of show those results more than the front of the knife. The corrosion forms and then it falls off the back and there's no sort of streaking. And so that's why I'm going to focus on the back of the knife for the result. Here we go. 25 cuts through cardboard with the heel half of the knife. Then we'll use the tip half of the knife to cut through one inch rope five times. So the carnauba wax view is going to freeze here in a second because my batteries died in the middle of the five minutes and I had to go replace it real quick. By the time I get the camera back on, it's right at the end of the cycle. We're just going to have to deal with it. All right, at five minutes, we got them out of the solution and we've wiped them down. Remember, we're interested in the back side, not really the front side. And none of them really did that well with the cardboard, which I think is to be expected. It's pretty tough stuff. They all did okay with the rope, which is interesting. And I don't know how the LEM spray performed as well as it did. I don't know what's going on there. All right, let's recap our results. Dishwasher test. The top row on wash number one, Carnauba Wax has maybe an edge plus Nanobond. And by the second wash, we can see that the Carnauba Wax and Nanobond are still in the lead. I give them first and second place. All right, let's recap the drip test. This is my favorite because everything starts to separate. Nanobond, we see first speck of rust at eight hours. We tap it out at 17 hours because it's starting to spread. Carnauba wax starts to rust at five hours and we tap it out at eight hours. Renaissance wax, one hour and tap out at two hours. LEM, one hour and we tap it out at one hour. That's the two hour picture. Super huge difference here, very interesting. The abrasion test result, you know, again, I think they all had a little bit of trouble with the rope. It'd be interesting to test this on food next time. At any rate, LEM sort of surprised me. I'm going to give it a second place tie with Nanobond. Carnauba Wax is in the lead. Fourth place, Renaissance. All right, ease of application. First place is definitely the LEM spray. You spray it, you wipe it down. Wait a few minutes and spray again, you're good. Second place is going to be the Nano Bond, also very easy to apply, very quick. Third place is the Renaissance Wax, two applications, you have to do a little buffing in between there. Fourth place is the Carnauba Wax, you got to add some heat into the mixture there somehow, and then there's some buffing after that. So in conclusion, how do we make heads or tails of all this? Well, let's put it all in a chart. All right, first, is it food safe? Nano Bond, no. Carnauba wax, yes. Renaissance, no. LEM, yes. How easy is it to apply? Nanobond, okay. Carnauba wax, not at all. Renaissance wax, eh. And the easiest, of course, is the LEM. Now, for the dishwasher, both the Carnauba wax and the Nanobond excelled. The Ren wax and the LEM, it was like they weren't even there. The field really started to scatter with the drip test. Nanobond beat everyone else by a mile. Carnauba wax did great. Renaissance wax and LEM, again, fell pretty short. Now, as far as abrasion resistance, a second place tie between the LEM and the Nanobond, and then Renaissance wax again last place. Carnauba wax first place. So, all right, if we're just counting squares, we can see that Carnauba wax has four green. It's clearly in the lead. Renaissance has four red, clearly in last place. But let's assign some scoring based on where they placed, first, second, third, or fourth. Carnauba Wax has so many first place finishes and Nanobond so many second place finishes. When we tally these up, the best score is the lowest. We see that Carnauba Wax inches out Nanobond and Renaissance Wax falls way behind. I think there's two key differentiators here. The first is if you need something that's food safe or not. And the second is... Can you and can your customers successfully apply the Carnauba wax without hurting the knife? Right now I'm using 3-in-1 oil. This has certainly been enlightening. I, I might take a look at some of these a little closer. What are you guys using and what did you think of this test? Sound off below. I'll see you next time. All right, let's talk about how I put the Nano Bond on for all these tests. I take the cloth that's provided, lay it over the sponge as directed, put four drops across the top, of the cloth and then we apply in a lengthwise direction like that and then at 90 degrees to that then you buff lightly with one side of the cloth buff lightly with the other side of the cloth 
And then I apply a second coat because I have no tactile or visual sense to gauge whether I've covered everything. Okay, it's very hard for me to see what's been covered and what's not, and there's no difference in the feel that I can tell. So just to make sure every little you know spot, speck, and streak is covered, I just go back and apply a second coat, buff it again. The whole process takes like a minute. But just so you know, technically there's two coats of Nanobond on this for all the tests. Okay, how I get the carnauba wax on is I put the knife in the oven at 195 degrees. The wax melts at 185 degrees. I take the knife out, apply the wax, which melts onto the surface of the knife. I put it back in the oven at 195 degrees. I let it sit. The streaky wax sort of spreads out, thins out, and becomes translucent. I thin it out with a towel. So I get all the excess wax off. I put it back in there. The streaks again thin out, and it, it looks uh, very clear when I bring it out of the oven. Uh, and then I let it cool, and as it goes through its cooling phase, it's sort of half solid, half liquid, and I start the buffing process then, and I'm able to keep things pretty clear as it as it uh, cools off entirely. So that's how I've been putting on the carnauba wax. I did try the low-speed buffer. My low-speed buffer does not generate enough friction to load the wax onto the buffing wheel. I even tried heating this and melting it and then applying it to the buffing wheel, then it just sets up on the wheel because the wheel spins quickly, generates a lot of air, cools off very quickly, and doesn't generate enough friction to unload onto the knife. So... The oven's the only thing I got. So the Renaissance wax is pretty goopy. It's, it's a little thicker than Vaseline, but it goes on uh, fairly thin, dries very quick. You just sort of rub small amounts. It doesn't take much at all to cover the surface. And then you sort of buff it with a cloth like this old t-shirt until it's clear and it stops running and it's fully dry. I'd say it takes a couple minutes to dry. For the uh, purposes of this testing, I did let it go ahead and dry for uh, two hours prior to taking it to testing. And I use two coats for every test. The LEM spray goes on very easily. It sprays on very wet and thick. And so you, know, you spray it, shake it for 10 seconds, spray it once. I let it sit for about 30 seconds, then take off the excess. I let it that uh, dry or soak in for five minutes, come back, apply a, apply a second coat, same, same process. Then I let that sit for an hour before doing the testing.